The following is a Hoop Bowl presentation. Hello and welcome to the Box Score Breakdown Show presented by Hoop Ball. My name is Adrian Benjamins and I'm joined by Neil Roach Lani. And this episode of the Box Score Breakdown Show is brought to you by Hawaiian Isles Kona Coffee Company. Get yourself a t- taste the Kona difference and get yourself some Hawaiian Isles Kona Coffee Company coffee. It's delicious. It's great. You guys will love it. Neil, I just ordered. I wanted to try. They have English toffee. They have a hazelnut and they have an Irish cream flavor. So I'm going to get my order in probably uh, tomorrow and order some new coffee because we're running low, man. God bless you. God bless you and the support of our sponsors. I am still learning how to make coffee at home, so which I've never done in my life. I'm not really I'm not really a coffee drinker, so but I do want to support our sponsor. So at some point I will I will drink it. I don't want to lie about it. Um. Anyway, um, I yeah. will convert you, Neil. For <laughs> yeah. Everyone else, go to HawaiianIsles.com. You can also find it on Amazon. And uh, go get yourself some great coffee. Neil, how are you doing, man? Hey, man. I'm doing great. Nice weekend. Things hey, go- I, yeah. I got something, a little bit of uh, news that I, I need to hit up before we start the show. And that is a congratulations to Neil Rotslani for destroying the DFS DraftKings hoop ball contest, finishing first place Neil Roach Lonnie, <laughs> how did you do it, man? Adrian, it's all what? skill. It's all skill <laughs> is what I have to say. Here's so the thing. Tell me, Here's the thing. Tell me week about, one- wait, wait. Mm-hmm. Tell me about your lineup. Was there who was who was your big hit? Who like oh. when you were making this lineup? Tell me like some of your thought process here, man. Yeah, so normally I don't use DraftKings. I usually use a FanDuel when I do my um DFS night. <clears throat> I just got started on that site. And actually I don't even do it for money. I just do it for trying to learning purposes. But uh, join this fan. Do th- I'm enjoying the DraftKings. It's a little bit different. So there's eight players versus nine. I don't know if you know that night. Um, there were a lot of injuries in Washington. Like uh, Sadarensky was starting, mm-hmm. and um, I put Jeff Green in there. I think I forget. I'm not sure if I put Jeff Green. Anyway, my two big studs went off. They were Westbrook because Paul, Paul George was out that night, and, mm-hmm. and then of course my true love. I just pick him, Anthony Davis, and he went crazy that night which he obviously does a lot so between those two guys and then that's my my guys my other ones hit and then i went with um another good one was jeremy grant for okc because i knew since paul george was out i thought he might have a good game against phoenix so that worked out as well nice yeah i like that just got lucky um i got funded and i'm gonna get a t-shirt adrian yeah (laughs) I gotta figure out how. I gotta figure out who that who sends that to me. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm like part of this thing, and I have no idea how it works. So it's good to see. It <laughs> tells you where well, my head is. Man, hoop ball was killing it. The the hoop ball team was destroying it. I know uh, you did well. Was it Josh Millman and uh, and Aaron Bruski that also finished like top four? I believe. Something? Yeah, I believe Bruski was fourth, and I think Josh was second. Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, uh, congrats to congrats to you, Neil. Great stuff, man. I gotta uh, start picking your brain on the DFS stuff. I love your thought process, though, on targeting some of those guys who you thought were gonna go off. Uh, that's some some great insight. All right, man. Uh, we got kind of a medium night tonight. What is it like a six game slate? Should we jump into it? Yeah, let's do it. All yeah. right. You want to start us off? I'll start us off, man. I, I do. I think it is my turn. I'm going to start us off. Let's start with the Detroit Pistons and the Orlando Magic. This one was tight. This one was super close. A 109 to 107. The Magic getting the victory here. I'm going to look in on the Pistons side, though. A lot of mediocre lines I'm seeing. I'm going to start with Blake Griffin, who had 15 points, five assists, two rebounds, a steal. Perfect 6-6 six six from the line. He shot 4-10 from the field. He added a 3. Um, who, who else? Uh, Reggie Jackson had 11 points, 4 assists, 5 rebounds. He shot 5-15, 1-3 tonight. Reggie Bullock got the start and looked okay here. 15 points and assists, 3 rebounds, 
Four of 14 from the field's not great. He did add three threes and shot a perfect four of four from the line. Drummond had a nice double-double here. 14 points with 15 boards. No blocks or steals, which is a bummer. Um, but he shot seven of 13, which is okay. Off the bench, they got a nice boost from Luke Kennard, who had 16 points, three assists, six rebounds. Um, Neil, this team... For fantasy is kind of uh, it's kind of disappointing, you know. We got we got Andre Drummond, we got Blake Griffin, Reggie Jackson is real up and down, and then most of these other guys I just don't trust at all, man. They got a glut of wing guys who from night to night it kind of changes between Bullock and Galloway, and I just don't trust any of these guys. Neil, what do you think of the Pistons? Yeah, there's really only one guy that I'm. I'm kind of watching, which is Bullock um, on the wing. I don't know if he'll ever get there, but I think he has the uh, minutes at least to try to get there. Um, if any of these players, Jackson is one guy that if you need a, in desperate need of a point guard and you have scarcity there, might be worth owning. Um, just if you're like struggling or in a deeper league. But other than that, there's no one here that jumps out at me um, that I'm paying attention to. So like you said, not much in terms of fantasy. Um, we'll see if Bullock can put it together. We know that he can shoot better than this. Forty-one uh, percent on the year. I think he was better last year. Ninety percent from the free throw line. So that definitely helps. Um, low turnover guy. Um, not low, but not bad turnover guy. So we'll see if he can get any better. But other than that, no one I'm paying attention to. Um, let me ask you one question. I'm going to throw you a curveball. Um, we know that uh, John Wall is out for the season now. Um, or expected to be. Would you want to have Thomas Sadoransky or Reggie Jackson? Who I think I would rather have Sadoransky because I think he's going to be better in like the assist category and some of these other categories. If you're strictly targeting points, I think Reggie Jackson will likely score more points from this point to the end of the season than Sadoransky. I think Sadoransky um, is not going to shoot as much as Reggie Jackson is, but I think Sadoransky is going to give you more dimes. He's going to give you some low end boards, maybe a little bit of defensive stats. So yeah, I would lean Sadoransky. All right. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I would too. I mean, I'm not big on I'd, – I'd take him over Reggie Jackson, but I'm not even big on Sadoransky. Um, bigger on Bryant over there, who looks like he might have the starting role for a while. Um, anyway, we can go on to uh, – should I go on to the Orlando side? Yes. All right. So led by Nicholas Vucevic, uh, 22 points, 11 rebounds, 4 assists, 10 of 15 shooting, 2 of 2 from the line. Steal, two blocks, three turnovers. Aaron Gordon had 22 and 10 with four assists, eight of 15 shooting, five of seven from the line, a three pointer and a block, two turnovers. Jonathan Isaac, a very quiet game in 33 minutes, four points, one rebound, one assist, and one of four from the field, two of two from the line, a steal. Um, <clears throat> DJ Augustine had a great night, 26 points, two rebounds, eight assists on six of 11 shooting, 10 of 10 from the free throw line, four three pointers, two steals. Evan Fournier, uh, 13 points, 5 rebounds, 3 assists, 6 of 10 shooting, 1 three-pointer, and a steal. <clears throat> Terrence Ross, who I was streaming this week, 9 points, 9 rebounds, 4 of 13 from the field, a three-pointer. was hoping to get some more defensive stats, just a block from him tonight. Uh, Windu played 16 minutes. Bamba got 14 minutes. I am streaming him next week because he has four games. We'll see how that works out to try to get some blocks. Tonight he had zero. Did have two steals, though, four points and six rebounds on two of seven shooting. Uh, that's basically it from this side. Isaac, I know I know we're all fans. I it's too it'd be too frustrating for me to own. I know you have him at least in one league, Adrian. Um the other news here is DJ Augustine. He's starting to look not so bad. Um I don't own him anywhere. I think he's out there in most all my leagues. He's 130th on the Nine category basis. Um, looks like he's now questionable with the right ankle. But um, if I need, you know, if my point guard goes down, he might be the one I pick up of all the ones out there. So just throw that out there. What are your thoughts on Orlando? 
This makes me so sad, man. <laughs> uh, John. Jonathan Isaac, and I'm take me out of that category of being a fan now. I'm really starting to dislike this guy, Neil. I just uh, uh, in 33 minutes, man, four points, one steal, one assist, one rebound. I mean, I feel like I can go out there and put up that number, and I know that's absolutely ridiculous. I'm I if I was out there, I would just completely do nothing. I know, but man, it just with this guy's talent and with this guy's upside for him to get 33 minutes in this game and to do so little, it's just, uh, it's depressing, Neil. And then DJ Augustine, I was so high on this guy in the off season. I drafted him on all my teams. I dropped him at the beginning of the season when he was garbage and now he's starting to turn it on and, uh, Man, anyways, it's just uh, the Magic are frustrating, man. Really, really frustrating. Um, all right, I'm going to move on to the next uh, the next game. I got the Wolves and the Heat. The Timberwolves getting the victory here, 113 to 104. Going to start with Cat, Carl Anthony Towns with a monster double-double. 34 points with 18 boards. He also gave you seven assists with six blocks, three steals, three threes, seven of nine from the line, 12 of 24 from the field. Neil, we knew this guy was going to likely turn it on when Jimmy Butler left, but this is like the night like tonight to see a line like this is even way far beyond more than I thought. And this guy is incredible. Um, Lord Covington, Robert Covington, 16 points, two blocks of steal, four rebounds, a three, perfect to seven of seven for the line, four of nine from the field. It's a nice game from him. Wiggins with 13 points, four assists, two boards, and a steal, one three, five of 16 from the field's not great, two of two from the line. Tyus Jones got the start here. Uh, we're still missing Jeff Teague and Derek Rose miss this one so Tyus Jones got the start I think he's going to be worth a stream as long as Teague and Rose are out uh didn't disappoint here tonight 12 points five steals five assists four rebounds two of two from the line five of 12 from the field Taj Gibson looks like uh him and Dario Saric kind of doing their thing Taj had 14 points seven rebounds and assists Six to ten from the field in 30 minutes. Sarek with 13 points, a block, a steal, an assist, four boards, two threes, four of ten from the field, three of three from the line. He was pretty good. Um, not too much else to talk about here, Neil. What do you think of the Timberwolves? Yeah, Carl Anthony Towns, what a monster night. You know, I, I got in my home league and <clears throat> someone was telling me who's owned him in the past that some nights he just it's a little frustrating. Other nights, it's just pure joy. And tonight was pure joy of owning him. Just a phenomenal game. I also like what you said about Tyus Jones. I was just looking back at his game log, and when he starts, he usually produces positive fantasy value in, easily inside the top 100. So if he's out there, I would put him in your lineups. Let's see what's going to happen with Rose and Teague. Rose ankle sprain. Uh, Teague, uh, Teague, excuse me, an ankle injury as well. Don't know how long those guys will be out with. I know Teague has been, I, I don't know. I, I, I won him in one league, and he's been out for a while, and, and I have a feeling it might linger on. Rose, I think, is more likely to come back sooner, so we'll see what happens there. Um, all right, any other thing? Any other thoughts before I go over to, all right, I see you shaking your head. I'll move on over to <laughs> uh, uh, Miami, which is such a, Busy roster. Um, so many guys. Um, no one's getting above 30 minutes except for, start with Josh Richardson, 36 minutes, 17 points, four rebounds, two assists on 413 shooting, seven to seven from the free throw line, and a block, two three pointers. Justice Winslow, he's been having some good, certainly should be ownable in points leagues, 10 points, seven rebounds, three assists on 415 shooting, a three pointer, four steals, three turnovers. Um, did go 4 of 15 from the field and 1 of 2 from the line. So his percentages are not helpful. Um, Hassan Whiteside, a very quiet night. 8 points, 13 rebounds on 3 of 9 shooting. 2 blocks, 
two of three from the line. So for him, that's actually a pretty good shooting night from the free throw line. Derek Jones Jr. gets the start um, in place of an in- injured James Johnson. This is the one guy I think we're tracking. 25 minutes tonight, 16 points, 9 rebounds, 7 of 11 from the field, 2 of 2 from the line. He looks the part of a man who can play in the NBA down low. Tonight is stealing a block as well. <clears throat> if He got uh, 25 minutes. Uh, this might be enough for him in terms of minutes. Hopefully they can stick around even when they're have a full roster. Magruder played 24 minutes, 7 points, 4 rebounds, 2 assists on 3 of 10 shooting, a 3-pointer, three, 3 turnovers, no defensive stats. Um, Dwayne Wade still getting uh, the farewell tour minutes, 28 minutes tonight, 21 points, 4 rebounds, 5 assists on 8 of 15 shooting, uh, 5 of 7 from the line, and a block. Tyler Johnson, 27 minutes, 8, 1, and 4 on 3 of 6 shooting. No defensive stats, one three-pointer. Kelly Olenek has a nice line in 26 minutes. 13-6-3, four of eight from the field, three three-pointers, two steals and a block, and Bam plays 18 minutes. Uh, the one thing I'll take away from this game, none of these guys are trustworthy. Um, unfortunately, they all play in the mid-20 minutes, um, it seems, from a night-to-night basis. Olenek tonight had a decent night, but I, I've had him before. He's not. <clears throat> he, he can be very frustrating to own. Wade, likewise, I think he'll have games like this, but um, he can also have some very off nights, as we've seen. I think Derek Jones Jr. is the one prospect who may get more time consistently, and if so, he can put up numbers. I don't, I'm not ready to get to pick him up just yet, but he is certainly at the top of my watch list. Um, and and don't forget, um, we may see even more guys come back here. I don't know when Drogic, Drogic's out for a while, but Waiters. He still has a possibility coming back, Ellington and James Johnson. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Heat? You were reading my mind because I was just about to say that you had mentioned at the beginning about how crowded this team is. We didn't see any player play really big minutes other than Josh Richardson. And, man, they're still missing like four guys, four key guys here, right? Drogic. James Johnson was out. Wayne Ellington was out. Dion Waiters was out still. So, uh, man, I would love to see the Miami Heat make a trade and clear up some of this logjam. But the reality is, is that the Miami Heat are the seventh seed in the East right now. So, you know, from a reality standpoint, it's kind of nice to be so deep, right? To have all these guys that they can just rotate in and out now for fantasy that doesn't help us so i don't know neil i i do agree with you Derek jones jr man that guy has some potential and skill and uh it's crazy that the suns i believe he was on the suns just let this guy go uh because man this guy has some talent but i think i'm just gonna stay away from the heat i have a lot of uh shares of tyler johnson Um, and I actually played him in a lot of my leagues tonight and was pretty disappointing, and I might just stay away from the Heat for a while. They're just too loaded, man. They're just overcrowded. All right, Neil, any closing thoughts before I move on to the next one? Yeah, and I think uh, Adebayo is really going to suffer from Derek Jones Jr. Uh, Adebayo has not looked good recently, and uh, he got in foul trouble pretty quickly here in, in just a few minutes, so... Was was taken out earlier than expected in the second quarter. Uh, down on him going forward. Yes. All right. I agree with that. I'm going to move on to the next game, which uh, I got the Bulls and the Raptors. And this was a little bit closer than I thought it would be. Raptors, arguably maybe the best team in the NBA versus the Bulls, one of the worst teams in the NBA. And uh, the Bulls hung in there, but the Raptors still got the win, 95-89. to 89. I'm going to take a look at the Bulls. Going to start with Lori Markinen, the Finn Reaper. 18 points, 10 boards, an assist, two steals, four threes tonight, six of 14 from the field, two of two from the line. I love this guy's game, man. I just, such a talented shooter. I love he hits the boards. Um, even a little bit of defense tonight, giving you the two steals. This guy's outstanding, man. What a great. Uh, what a great guy to have to build around. Uh, the Bulls, man, the future's bright for them. Um, Holiday with 11 points, four steals, and assists, 
four rebounds, five of 11 from the field, one three tonight. Zach Levine, the shooting was really bad tonight. It was only three of 17 for 13 points. Uh, he fouled out of this game as well, so not great. But he did give you two assists, three steals. He was seven of seven from the line, so a couple positives there. Wendell Carter Jr., I hope he's starting to come around. 16 points with 11 boards and assists. Um, no blocks, which is a disappointment, but hey, we'll take this double-double. Even shot, very efficient, 6 of 10 from the field, 4 of 4 from the line. We'll take that. Chris Dunn, he's starting to, uh, I think he's really starting to get up to speed. He's starting to look good. He's coming around 14 points with eight assists, three rebounds, two blocks, six of 15 from the field, two of two from the line. Bulls have nothing to play for other than Zion. I think Dunn could be poised for a really big second half of the season as the Bulls are just tanking and developing their youth. So nice to see. Ryan R.C. Diacono, three points in just 22 minutes. Robin Lopez, a goose egg, zero points in 14 minutes. Hutchinson had 11 points off the bench in 14 minutes, but we know we are not going to trust him. Not too much else to talk about on the bench. Uh, Parker, out of the rotation. Payne is out of this rotation. Portis is hurt. Le uh, Valentine is hurt. So uh, th missing a lot of guys. Neil, what are your thoughts on your hometown Chicago Bulls? Yeah, they put up a good fight today. <clears throat> Their offense has really, though, has not been good. Um, I know Hoiberg wasn't a great coach, but he definitely helped with the offense, and it's been really bad recently. I don't know if it's just these guys coming back out there, but they do have their full complement of starters out there now, and I thought they'd be able to score a little bit better. Uh, the two things that I'm really watching, um, like you said, Markinen is a really good player. Um, he right now is 59th in 8-cat. Zach Levine's 31st. Um, I, I think by season's end, Markinen will be the number one fantasy player from the Bulls. I think Levine will come down about 20 spots, and Markinen will go up about 10 to 15 spots. Holiday is the other guy I'm watching. He played 40 minutes tonight, even with their full starters there. So not wor I was worried about how he would be. He's getting plenty of minutes. Certainly he's not going to be the high-volume shooter, but he's 61st overall in ACAT leagues, and I think he's going to stick around. He may drop around from there, but not too far off. So still like him rest of season. And those are my two thoughts on the Bulls. Hey, super quick, just want to add, yeah. Lori, Lori Markinen in nine cat leagues is the number 50 ranked player. And this is, Neil, he missed the whole beginning of the season. Um, he's ranked ahead right now of John Wall, Ben Simmons, uh, Jaron Jackson Jr., Blake Griffin. Uh, man, I can go on and on. Um, CJ McCollum, he's ranked ahead of. He missed the whole beginning of the season. And I agree with you, man. By the end of the season, this guy's going to be up towards the top of the rankings. He's just he's just outstanding. Yeah, but you're looking at a poor game basis, I imagine, right? Uh, no, I'm looking at a uh, nine cat player ranking, player raider for the season. I mean, how is that possible that this guy is ranked number fifty? Am I re am I reading this right? <laughs> you may have uh, per game versus total. Okay, that might be it. But huh. like, like you said, on a per game basis, he's doing phenomenal. Um, just want to clarify that. Okay, that might be right there. <laughs> <That might be right. laughs> but I like your enthusiasm for my Chicago more, Bulls. You know what? That makes more sense because I'm <laughs> tripping out that this guy missed like such a huge chunk of the season and he's already ranked ahead of all these guys. Yeah. Like you that makes more sense that it's on a per game. Yeah. Uh, but but we, we can't right we now. can't assume going forward he's gonna have play as many games as those other guys. So uh I think that's the measurement to use. Toronto, let's see. Tonight, they were missing their general still out, Kyle Lowry. Um, this guy, he helps his team so much, even if he's not their number one star anymore. Still out with a back injury. I think Nick Nurse said he's coming back soon. We'll see how um, We'll see how soon that really is. Of course, tonight they were led by, excuse me, my thing froze up, Kawhi Leonard, who had a fantastic night. 
Um, 27 points, 9 rebounds, 8 of 22 shooting, 10 of 11 from the line, a three-pointer, two turnovers. Uh, Pascal Siakam, double-double, 20 points, 12 rebounds, 4 assists, 7 to 12 shooting, 5 of 6 from the free throw line, a three-pointer, three turnovers. Serge Ibaka, quiet game for him, 8.7 rebounds, two assists on 4 of 10 shooting, a steal and two blocks. Danny Green, 10, 4, and 0, 4 of 8 shooting, two three-pointers, two steals, two blocks, a very solid night night from him van fleet getting the starting role over lowry played 33 minutes 10 points five rebounds seven assists on three of 12 shooting two three-pointers and a steal norman powell plays 23 minutes in a newbie 21 monroe actually out there for 18 none of those guys is really putting up any fantasy value unfortunately <clears throat> just the starters uh, van fleet only when he gets to start even when he starts it's still a little sketchy tonight of course it was fine um, Danny Green, someone I'm not trusting. He's fallen to one twelfth on a per game basis. I just, it's too hard for me to own players like that who are kind of up and down. Uh, Valanciunas is out for the next seven games, and uh, that's really it. Pascal Siakam keeps climbing. Um, fifty fourth overall on a per game basis. I think he'll finish somewhere in that range, maybe into the forties. We'll see how it works out. Um, any thoughts from you on the Toronto Raptors? No thoughts from me. Well, we kind of know you pretty much nailed everything, and we pretty much know um, what there is to know with the Raptors. Going to jump into the next game. The Oklahoma City Thunder and the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, let's see, pulling this up, another close game. Love seeing these uh, exciting close finishes, and this one – the Mavericks squeaked out the victory here, 105 to 103. Gonna jump in on the Thunder side and gonna start with Westbrook, who, oh man, uh, you know, we talked about in nine category leagues why we're not super high on Westbrook because of the turnovers and the field goal percentage. And we saw that here tonight with five turnovers and he shot four of 22. From the field, uh, Neil. I don't know what percent that is, but I imagine it's pretty low. <laughs> nine points. He got six steals, eight assists, nine rebounds. He went zero of eight from three point range, one of two from the line. Um, Stephen Adams with a little bit of a disappointment here. Only eight points, two steals, two assists, nine boards. He only shot five. He only took five shots, made four of them. Paul George, he was probably the biggest line on this side, uh, on on this team. 36 points to go along with two steals, five rebounds, 3 of 11 from downtown, 12 of 24 from the field, 9 of 12 from the line. Jeremy Grant, this is a little disappointing from him, only 10 points, two boards, two steals, 4 of 8 from the field. Um, Nader got the start in this one, but only played 16 minutes and had three points. Schroeder had a nice game off the bench, 19 points, three assists, four boards, one steal, one block. He had two threes, shot eight of 19 from the field. Uh, 10 points from Patterson is nice. Not too much else to talk about though. Felton with three points, Noel with two points, Diallo with only three points. Neil, what do you think of the Thunder? Yeah, well, Westbrook's really just been struggling this year. Um, like you said, both in the field goal percentage and free throw percentage have been down. And <clears throat> even in eight cat leagues, where I, I sort of value him at the end of the first round in eight cat leagues, and this year he's not, he's more of a mid second rounder. Um, certainly not in the, in the top two rounds in nine cat. Uh, let's see. The only the only guy I'm really watching here, I actually am watching two guys, Schroeder and Grant. Uh, I don't own either one of them. They're probably own in maybe half your leagues i don't um i'm not picking either one up yet because i think they'll be up and down but um if i needed a specialist in the defense i'd go with grant and if i needed points and assists i guess i go with Truder. but um neither one I, i've got enough talent that i don't need those guys yet but those are guys that i might place in later for specialist roles if that makes sense all right so i'm going to go on to uh the dallas side start with um should I start with Luka Doncic? Do you think I should start with Luka Doncic? Because I'm going to start with Luka Doncic. 25 Always. points. <laughs> Three rebounds, seven assists on 9-19 shooting. 
three of four from the free throw line, four three pointers and a steal. Did have six turnovers. Dennis Smith Jr. is back. Played 27 minutes, 14 points, four rebounds, one assist on five of 10 shooting. Two of two from the line, two three pointers, five turnovers. Uh, DeAndre Jordan double doubled in 33 minutes, 12 points, 17 rebounds, one assist, four of six from the free throw. I mean, from the field and four of six from the free throw line, two steals, two blocks, three turnovers. Harrison Barnes. Another points guy, 16 points, six rebounds, six of 13 shooting, a three pointer, two steals. Maxi Kleber gets a start. I thought he might do better than this with the starting role. Played 28 minutes, just three points though, and one of five shooting, seven rebounds and assist, a three pointer and a steal. Off the bench, Dorian Finney Smith played 22 minutes, 10 4 and 0 with a steal and a block. JJ Berea. Someone I like um, to stream for assists. Tonight, 10 assists in 21 minutes, 6 points, a rebound on 2 of 8, shooting 2 three-pointers and a steal. Dwight Powell got 15 minutes, Devin Harris 14, Dirk 10. Um, not much to take away from here. I wanted to see how Kleber would do in a starting role. Didn't do much, just in case it ever came to the situation where he got in there permanently if some injury took place. Um, someone who I think has some talent, but... Um, uh, off the radar for now. Not much else here. Dennis Smith Jr. has climbed his way to 119 in a per game basis. An eight cat. I still don't trust his percentages enough to really want to bite on him. But uh, if you did draft him, he, he is producing value. So, um, what are your thoughts on the Mavericks? Um, I don't know. I I don't have too much else to add. Um, really interesting to see Dennis Smith Jr. back in the lineup, and you know he had a decent game here with 14 points, but. Um, I don't know. I just love Luka Doncic is pretty much all I got to say. And, um, yeah, I don't know, man. This team feels kind of somewhat of a wasteland here because we really only count on, you know, Harrison Barnes and Doncic and DeAndre Jordan. But everyone else, um, from night to night, I just don't trust uh, a lot of these other players on this team. So, um, I don't know. Not my favorite team for fantasy, although you know I love watching Luka Doncic. Uh, all right, Neil, I'm going to move on. Let's keep rolling. Uh, next game I got up is the Sixers and the Trailblazers. This one, I believe this was like the only blowout of the evening. And uh, the Blazers getting a big win here, 129-95. to It was pretty interesting because the Sixers – um, have been pretty good. So uh, really interesting to see the Blazers getting such a big victory here. Going to jump in on the Sixers. Going to start with Ben Simmons. 19 points with a steal, three assists, three boards, 5 of 10 from the line, 7 of 12 from the field. J.J. Redick had 11 points, three steals and assists, two threes. He only shot three of 11 from the field. Perfect 3-3 from the line. Jimmy Butler with a big letdown here. Only 2 of 12 from the field for 5 points. He did have 6 assists, a steal, 3 boards, no 3s. So pretty disappointing. Chandler disappointed with 5 points in a start, only 21 minutes. Uh, Johnson had 2 points. McConnell off the bench was a nice spark, had 14 points. Um... Let me see here. Who else? Jackson had 10 points. Cork Moss had 10 points, but not a lot to talk about here. Really disappointing game. Um, the other thing I want to mention, Joel Embiid, did he did, – are you seeing an injury? Uh, oh, okay, so it looked like he was out of this game with a knee injury, so he didn't even play in this game. So uh, they were missing Joel Embiid. Likely that's why they got blown out here. Uh, but, you know, whenever you think Embiid's going to miss, you likely think that Simmons and Butler are going to have a huge game. So really disappointing game from Jimmy Butler here. Neil, what do you think of the Sixers? Yeah, I was curious how this team was going to pre- perform out uh, <clears throat> out west without Embiid, and they just got shellacked. Um, did not see this one coming. I thought they'd put a, a better fight. Not much to take away from here. Um I was I was looking to see how how some of these guys would perform with Embiid out. You know, would Wilson Chandler take more shots? He only took four tonight, but it was such a one sided game. Only played twenty one minutes, so it's hard to get a read on some of these other guys who m- might step up in case there's an injury to the big three and and uh, that's longer lasting and didn't get a read tonight. So 
as often the case is with blowouts, so not much else to add. Um, I don't know, Adrian. What are your thoughts mm. on uh, – <laughs> What do you th- like how does – I don't understand the NBA sometimes. I guess sometimes teams just like they're on the road, they're tired, and they just get killed. So I guess it's very, very reasonable. But anyway, I'll go with the Portland side. Um, start with Damian Lillard. Um, sorry, 15 points, seven rebounds, five assists on six to 10 shooting, three, three, three pointers. CJ McCollum had a great night, 35 points, three rebounds, three assists on 13 of 18 shooting five of five from the free throw line, four, three pointers, uh, use of Nurkic, 14, seven and three on seven of 11 shooting one steal, one block, four turnovers, Aminu. This guy is starting to make me curious. 16, 8, and 2 in just 22 minutes. He did only take six shots. I mean, he made five of them tonight, made all his free throws, so that is highly unusual for him, but still an impressive night. A three-pointer. Evan Turner gets the start. Eight points, seven rebounds. Two assists on four or six shooting. No steals, no blocks. Uh, Zach Collins plays 26 minutes off the bench, goes for seven, six, and four. Uh, Seth Curry gets 20 minutes. Uh, Myers Leonard, 17. A lot of these guys get extra minutes because of the blowout. Stouts gets 14. Lehman, 12. Swanigan, 10. Um, yeah, so again, a blowout. Not much to see here. It looks like Mo Harkless is out because of a left knee injury. He still hasn't broken the top 200 yet per game basis, so not quite there yet and probably won't be. I don't see it so far um, from what I've seen on this team. Any thoughts from you on Portland? Yeah, my only thought is um, just when I kind of felt like Mo Harkless was starting to get going, ruled out of this one with the left knee issue. Hopefully nothing serious. Hopefully it's just precautionary. Um, and, you know, we're not counting on Mo Harkless, but just the guy I was hoping in deeper leagues could maybe emerge with some value that I could maybe – Uh, try to pick up in some deep leagues so really disappointing to see him miss this game here that's about all i got gonna move into uh i think this is the last game of the evening am i right that's it one more and we're done yes one more game and this one the sacramento kings and the los angeles lakers lakers getting the victory here 121 to 114 i'm gonna start with the kings and i gotta start with to Aaron Fox, who's having a fantastic season. 26 points, 3 steals, 7 assists, a block, 4 boards, 1-3. Shot a very efficient 12 of 19 from the field. Beautiful game from him. Buddy healed with 21 points, 2 assists, 3 rebounds, um, 4 threes tonight. 7 of 17 from the field. Three or four from the line. Willie Cauley-Stein with a double-double. 11 points, 12 boards, two assists, three blocks. Love seeing those uh, swats from uh, Willie Cauley-Stein. Five of ten from the field, one of one from the line. Shumpert, who I've seen getting picked up in quite a few leagues. The shooting was off tonight. It was only three of 12 from the field for eight points. Two steals, five assists, two rebounds, one three, one of two from the line. Belitza did not have it going tonight. Only five points, nine boards, and two assists, and a steal is nice. One three. Um, off the bench, they got a beautiful game from Bog Bog. Uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich, 21 points, one block, one steal, four assists, five boards, three threes, nine of 18 from the field. A pretty good game from him. Not too much else to talk about. We're still waiting for the return of Marvin Bagley. Neil, what do you think of the Sacramento Kings? Yeah, I'm a little worried about Shumpert. Um, just he's he's not known. Tonight he took 12 shots. I know he's been shooting more in the system, but he's just not known for a scorer. And then if his defensive stats aren't there and if he's not shooting well, it can all fall apart on a game-to-game basis. And he's still outside the top 125. I have him 128 on a per-game basis. Um, could get better. But I think that will go down once Bagley comes in just because we'll have fewer minutes out there as rotations shrink up a bit. I, um, I'm i still a believer in Bogdan, though. I think this guy has phenomenal talent, uh, especially great 
shooting stroke and ability to facilitate. So um, I would take him if you can get him. He's 115 on a per-game basis. I think he'll still finish inside the top 100. So he's still a round or two off value, in my opinion. Bielitsa, he will fade, I think, once Bagley comes back. But Which I'm expecting him to be back. I'm seeing here not for another uh, two and a half weeks. So you still have time to kind of stream Bielitsa if he's out there. Uh, won't be great, but will probably be around 100 hundred ish value. Um that's all my thoughts on this team. Darren Fox, I gotta thank you again. I picked him up all because of your recommendation. Adrian, you not only could you score more points than Jonathan Isaac, you could be a GM. <laughs> John the Aaron Fox and you, right now, if you were the GM, they they wouldn't have Bagley. I think they would have Doncic, wouldn't they? I mean you wouldn't have taken ba- Don Bagley over Doncic. I'll be honest with you. I probably would have taken Jaron Jackson Jr. Oh, but yeah, it it would have been JJJ or Doncic for sure. If I if I was the GM of the Kings and I had that um, number two pick, uh, it 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 would have either been JJJ or uh, Doncic for sure. Well, I think Um, both those guys are are pretty darn good. So we'll see how they work out. That's it, man. We got done in a pretty good time. This, this, right. is, our, this, is, awesome. this is our last show for 2018. We are going to be back tomorrow. Well, there's a slight – well, we'll just say we're off tomorrow. <laughs> and then if we're on, we'll surprise you. Yes, I like that. <laughs> hey, we hope you guys are having a great holiday. I hope everyone is just enjoying um, their family and friends and just having a good time. I hope you're all safe and just enjoying it, man. And um, – have a good new year, everybody. It's been great. We're looking forward to a bang in 2019, Neil. Let's uh I can't wait for the second half of the season. We we've had some really great games. It's been a really fun fantasy season, man. And I can't wait for 2019. It's gonna be amazing. Uh Neil, should we put a bow on this one? Any closing thoughts from you? Just once again remind you of our uh Twitter handles. He is at Adrian Benjamins. I am at Ball with Neil. Um, that's it, man. Take us out. All right, you guys. Hey, go get the in-season uh, premium membership while you're at it. There's still uh, quite a bit of season left. I'm, I don't even think we've really hit the halfway point yet. We're getting close, but we're not quite there yet. So go, so go get the in-season uh, premium membership. A lot of great stuff over there. Thank you guys so much for listening and supporting the show. We will either talk to you guys tomorrow or we'll talk to you in uh, 2019. All right, you guys, have a good one. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.